Hello. Good evening. This is Ralph. Welcome, Prime Minister. Taiwan. Welcome, Prime Minister. And thank you so much for calling oh, in. Oh, you see, yeah. I am doing well, um, um, Prime Minister. Um, despite the situation that we have and, uh, and the news of the, of the passing of Sir Vincent, we we yes. I have been trying to to celebrate his life as he has lived a, a very full and wholesome life, and I believe that it is one that's worth celebrating. But we always knew that um, yes. the first the first news you would get when you landed in Taipei would not be the kind of news that you were expecting. No, I landed as you know, there's a twelve hour difference. Yes. It's now eight thirty in the morning here. So that when when Sir Vincent died at ten past three Saint Vincent and the Grenadines time in the morning I would have been on the plane from New York to Taipei. Yes. So when I arrived here and I got the news. Naturally, I I called home and spoke to the acting cabinet secretary, Angela, Angie Jackson Williams, Williams Jackson. I spoke also to Captain Prime Minister Montgomery Daniel, to the General Secretary of the Party, Julian Francis. I spoke to Sir Louis in New York, and I spoke to. Glen Beach and his wife. The I I last saw Vincent on a Saturday evening, just before I went to the airport to go to New York. And as I was leaving, I I told him that we got to hold the fort together, and I will see him after his birthday. On the thirteenth, which day he would have been eighty-eight, yes. And as you know, he had difficulty speaking for quite a few days, shortness of breath, and he smiled and nodded and said, "Yeah." When I left him, I told him, I say, I want to tell you yet again that I love you very much. And I and the party and the government, we will protect your legacy and your memory. And that protection of his legacy and his memory would not be just in words, but in deeds. Because Vincent Beach, was one of the outstanding historical figures of the 20th century in St. Vincent and Grenadines and in the Caribbean. He grew from humble beginnings in South Rivers to occupy high offices of state ministerial offices and also he was opposition leader, and he acted as prime minister at different various times between 2001 and 2005. His parliamentary representative in North Central Winwood, and uh, he was parliamentary representative subsequently in South Winwood. He was the architect of very important initiatives on the K-12 administration, including the revival of the sugar industry, land reform in several important areas, building of the uh, hospital in Georgetown, um, uh, several um, initiatives in respect of agricultural diversification. The matter of the diamond there. Yes. He was a to the timing of his death, the last survivor of the, the, the group that had come to Taiwan to establish diplomatic relations mm. with the Republic of China and so on and so forth. Um, he was also the first leader of the Labour Party, Unity Labour Party, the late 1990s, to lead a party-to-party -party mission to the Cuban Communist Party in Cuba. 
It's because it's nationalist and by imperialist. He was an advanced social democrat, very interested in the poor and the working people, the farmers, fisher folk. In fact, he's the man who initiated Fisherman's Day when he was Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries in the 1970s. In fact, that was initiated in 1975 by him. He's the person who is single-handedly responsible for the, the, the Belial prison. He's the man who brought order into the prison. He's the one who drove the process for the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority to be established on Category 1 status to be granted. Um, he was there with Sims Martin and others and, and helping to drive the Argyle International Airport, the Canoan Jet Airport, and, and many other important initiatives. He was my advisor. He was very wise, very experienced. You know, I always tell people that if Vince Beach had studied law, he would have been an outstanding solicitor. I've seen him confound highly trained lawyers with a, with a detailed and close reading of the law. And of course, he developed that from his detailed understanding of electronics because he was trained in that area. He served in the, the, the Air Force in, in the United Kingdom. Um, he did work in Canada in the field of electronics. He came back, set up a business before he got into politics in 1972 when he ran for the first time. He was instrumental in building the Unity Labour Party and building it into a winning coalition. He, he led the party in 1998 for us to get 55% of the vote, but we lost once by one seat. We lost in East Kingston by 20 odd votes. He was always a champion of the working people, the farmers, the fisher folk, the nation as a whole. You know, he was, he was the individual who was put in charge by Milton Cato of the committee, which um, was set up originally the national insurance services through a bill which was taken to Parliament. But that bill fell when the, uh, Milton Gato um, dissolved the Parliament in July and had the elections in July 1984. And that very same bill is what the James Mitchell administration introduced three years later in 1987. So you can see his handiwork across a wide range of initiatives. Very much involved in establishing the the Camden Park Industrial Estate as, as minister responsible for industry. You, you notice the, the range of initiatives I'm talking about. Absolutely. Um, and of course, he helped to reform the police force in the period 2001 to 2005, and subsequently, I had him sit in the cabinet as an advisor to the prime minister, a consultant. And, and, and uh, as you know, I made public when I did at the time of the swearing in of our Governor General, Excellency Susan Duggan, that I consulted Sir Vincent on more than one occasion in respect of the, the appointment of a Governor General to replace um, Sir Frederick, who had um, indicated that he was demitting because of his 
decline in health. Sir Vincent is a child of the 20th century and who God was very favorable to him, gave him almost two decades in the, in the 21st century. He had a very good innings. He was a good husband, family man, father, grandfather, great grandfather, very loyal to his friends. He is he's a person who sought to unify. You know, he is tough, experience wise, knowledgeable on on, on modern governance. I, I would miss him very, very much. You know, in the book of Micah, the prophet posed the question, what does the, what does the Lord require of us? And the answer was, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Vincent did those things. He's a good Methodist, a believer. You know, I visited him very, very often when when you're sick. His decline was quite rapid. Yes, I, I must say that. Um, as the cancer went into his bones. And, uh, you know, about two weeks ago, I said, you know, we're going to beat this thing, you know. He said, Comrade, I don't believe that we're going to beat it. He said, I'm leaving it in the hands of the Lord. And I left him. I, I said to him, you know, I'm going to Taiwan. I said, don't leave me. Don't leave us while I'm away, you know. I said, hold on, let's let's go to your 88th birthday and beyond. He smiled, he nodded. <laughs> um, he, I, I felt that he was going to stay with us. But he had been up and down on a Wednesday at the long cabinet meeting at a quarter to six. The evening I got a call from Glenn, his son, to tell me that he was, he wasn't looking good. That's when they gone. Mm-hmm. So I immediately adjourned cabinet and went out. And he was breathing very, very heavily. I stayed with him one and a half, two hours. And by the end of that time, his breathing had subsided properly. He had had some coconut water. Um, but in fact, when I left him that, Wednesday night, he held my hands with great difficulty. He said to me, come on, take care of your health. Um, you know, we have been through a lot of battles together. And I would miss him very, very much. Between, between 2001, and 2015, those 14 years, because he, you know, he, he demitted as office as a representative at the end of the 2001 to 2005 period. He didn't run 2005. He retired from active politics, well, as a candidate. And then, he was appointed as consultant to the Prime Minister, just a, he was a, less than a minute from my office, it was his office. And every morning, we got in early, you know, country boys, now. We, we, we get up early. So we were at the office at 7.30. And he and I and Permanent Secretary Pompey, Godfrey Pompey, mm-hmm. who was Yes, in security in the office of the Prime Minister, 
he was Vincent's PS also, permanent secretary at the in the earlier period. But we'll be the crew of them will come into the office by seven thirty. And we will address the issues which we had to address in terms of the governance of the country and important mm -hmm. the important policy initiatives and following up on implementation. And oh. almost every morning when we finish with that I will say to to Pompey. I say Pumps, you gotta leave us now, eh? So Vincent and I have some matters to talk about. Above your pay grade. <laughs> That's when we were shaping some other issues strategically. Mm -hmm. And to deal with wide ranging political matters. And we had to touch some concern governance. Because remember, governance is about two things. It's about government and it's about politics. And being so skilled in both areas. So we had a very close working relationship together. Prime Minister, if you could you could you could you tell us how it is two individuals who were at first quite adversarial based on the cut and thrust of politics, the MNU, the the yes. SBLP, could become uh, almost as as uh, David and, and and Jonathan towards towards the latter part of, of, of their lives, especially that, that of civil well, see, the, the thing is this. Both, both Vince and I are children of North Central, Winwood. And uh, we were molded by some of the similar forces, social forces. We went to the grammar school, I went to the grammar school in those days, not easy for boys from the countryside to get into the grammar school. And then we had the benefit of regional and international experience. <clears throat> and in North Central, we had good friends. We all had good friends, Vincent's supporters, and my supporters had good friendships. And my supporters when we were political opponents from the UPM to MNU. Um, and he was the former Civil the Grandi's Labour Party. We were we were never um, antagonistic in the sense of developing hatreds and bile and so on because the people who supported me also liked him, and those who supported him also liked me. And, and after 1989, when the NDP won all the seats, it was our supporters in North Central and elsewhere in the country who told us, we'll go to social events. And if Vince arrives before me, both sides would be at him, both sets of supporters that you all have to come together and sort this matter out. If I arrive, the same thing. So it's a... In other words, they were... The people had the wisdom and they facilitated us coming together. Even though there were some elements minority elements nationally in the former Labour Party which didn't want to see us to come together. But that is history and that's why I say that Vincent was so instrumental in the U U ULP being built and laid the foundations for a coalition which have caused us to win four elections, form government and be reconfirmed in government. But the coalition began on the Vincent in 1998 when, in the June 1998 election, we won 55% of the vote, but lost the election, as I said, by one seat with 20 something votes in East Kingston. It's, his performance was remarkable, and you, you would, he would tell everybody 
but the first time he felt very comfortable in in politics, genuinely comfortable, was in the ULP, where his talents were fully recognized, and they were given free reign, and he provided excellent leadership. Mm. Now, I know that things are very difficult now for Lady Vida, nearly 60 years of marriage, and I know the children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren are all in mourning. The, the family had said to me that, no, you can go and do your work Ralph, in, uh, in Taiwan. But this was the only window I had. And he even said to me, don't, don't, don't worry, don't, don't, don't cut your trip short. Uh, because I told him I may have to cut my trip short if anything were to happen in my absence. Because there are several family members who can't be back, who can't be in St. Vincent until after the 15th. But I, I have alerted my host here in Taipei, and I want to see how, if I could rearrange my schedule. And I would I'd let all the comrades know what the situation um, would be like in terms of my return and then the, the, the time for us to, to have the funeral. Because the funeral, I, I announced on 705 radio at about 6.30 today. Oh. And I'm at the same point on Star, sorry, on, um, on WFM. I spoke at, on which station I also spoke at, there would be a, the funeral would be a state funeral. So Vince has held the high office, high offices of the state, and also was very important to lead of the opposition, he was acting prime minister. So under the rules that have been established for state funerals, he, he qualifies, um, not just as an official funeral, but a state funeral, and will be given all the honors and dignities appertaining to a state funeral. They have already spoken to both Sir Louis and Montgomery Daniel, who is the acting prime minister. But Sir Louis is in New York. He's on his way home from from international duty. He spoke He's this there. morning. He spoke this morning on uh, Wednesday on VFM and, and spoke. Um, gave his yes, he told me that. So, he told yes. me he spoke with you on VFM. Um, and. And uh, the, the, I also spoke, as I said, to the acting cabinet secretary, who is Angela, Angie Williams Jackson. The, and, and she has the additional, an additional duty to make sure that this funeral is properly organized. And Montgomery Daniel, this evening would be in touch. I, I suspect he'd have already been in touch with the, com the, the Commission of Police for all yeah. the dignities connected, touching and concerning the, the state funeral. Days when the flag had to be flown at half mass and everything like that. All of these matters would be dealt with in the usual manner. You know, in a wider sense, Look, we are a small country. We have, since 2001, we have lost the following leaders in an active sense. Well, Sir James is still there, um, but Sir James is not active in any political sense. But he gives from time to time a speech on the radio. He's, then there's Sir Vincent, not Lombardus, Sir Frederick, 
the governor general, we lost also Sir Charles. Mr. Eustace, who was a, the third prime minister, is indicated he is not contesting again. In East Kingston, so that, um, and you, you, you notice the number of leaders, mature leaders who have made important contributions in our society. Yeah political leaders and and, and when, a, when, a, when a small society like ours we lose such important leaders we are robbed, denied of much guidance and the, the, it's all the more important for those of us who have been around for some time, to still be there to assist in chat the way forward and to do so within the framework, which Sir Vincent would have helped to lay down and which we have to refine and to ensure that we have renewal, we have continuity, but at the same time have change and to have the necessary adaptations and alterations and reform as the circumstances, the extant circumstances and the prospective circumstances alter so that we can adapt and to have the requisite flexibility not only must we have reason but the reason must be combined with wisdom where you get judgment, you know, see on their people who are educated and in a apply reasons but sometimes the reason may be so abstract and that it is away from the real world that you get you don't get the wisdom and you don't get the judgment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is where the leaders who I'm mentioning would bring to bear and uh, that's where I will miss so Vincent, very, very much. I yeah, mean, I wanted know, to, I wanted to comment on something. Uh, I apologize, but uh, um, there. No, is, that's okay. Please. There is, there is discussion as we talk both personally and 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 uh, professionally for you as a politician about the selflessness of of Sir Vincent at a time when uh, we had won the election in 1998 and the writing was on the wall that we were we were we were on the on the in the ascendancy, we had won 55% of the vote, even though we had lost by a, a, a small margin. But even in, in light of that, he stepped aside, stepped down, and handed leadership of the party to a younger, more vibrant Ralph Gonzalez. Uh, you care to comment on that and what it would take, uh, what kind of post it would take to, to, to do such um, uh, such uh, significant thing in, in the light? On the night of the election in June 1998, when everybody had left our election night headquarters out of the Grand View Hotel, Sir Vince and I alone were left in the room. And he said to me, he said, Comrade, if you had led us in the election, I think we would have won it. I said, no, 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 you have just led us and we have 55% of the vote. I said, the reason why we didn't win East Kingston is because we didn't have, we faltered in the last seven days, we didn't have enough money to run the, 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 the campaign properly and to, to get out the vote on the day itself. Um, I said, no, he said, no, 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 no. He said, you know, There are some people who don't think that I have what it takes to be Prime Minister. You know, because of, you know, he had been 
not seen, and quite mistakenly, not seen as a towering man with, with, with policy vision and the like. And, and I say that is a mistake that I myself in an earlier period had committed, committed that error. But that was the humility of the man. So I said, no, 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 foolishness. I, I tell him, I said, this, this result by which the NDP has here is untenable. And um, I said, sooner rather than later, they're going to do something which will get the whole people united against them. And then um, the people will come out on the streets and they'll have to um, call fresh elections before the end of the term. And he said to me, well, while I agree with that, he said it has to happen pretty soon because if it doesn't happen, I am going to make way for you. I said, well, you mean make way for me? So there'll be an election, there'll be a contest in the party. He said, well, you know, I will support you, Ralph. And of course, Later that year, um, when there are certain forces in the party and, and uh, one or two official, um, leading members uh, felt that they would move against Vincent. And Vincent said, okay, I'll go. He, he Vincent said, he'll go and uh, let's have election, internal elections. And that's when I won the elections in 1998, December. And he was steadfast in his support for me, campaigned. And by that time, you know, there was not no talk of old labor and old MNU. Mm -hmm. In fact, he told the people, he said, this old labor and old MNU, that's, those days are done. This is a united party going forward. And the best man to lead us now is Ralph. And what was even more, he said, I am going to contest under his leadership, and I'm privileged to serve in the cabinet of Ralph Gonzalez. So that's very unusual in our Caribbean. Exactly. You don't have exactly. it in this Caribbean. Exactly. So, eh? exactly. That is that is unheard of, and I think speaks to the stature of the, of the individual. The that is the model, that, that lesson, that teaching, that is the model which I put towards, put to the Central Executive and to the National Council and the National Convention of our party, that I would follow. Um, but as you know, they rejected the idea of IDBT in office as leader. But I would gladly serve under one of the younger men or women, but, but there's no young woman on the horizon in the party mm -hmm. in that leadership rank. Um, but I must tell you, so Vincent was very close to the younger people in the party and Lady Vida said to me in last week and then said it to Camillo went to visit and when he heard Camillo's voice size of clothes and everything the divider said that he he just jumped up he beamed you know and held his hand out for Camillo who went and embraced him where he lay in the end of bed and it was reported to me that it was a joyous occasion yes. and I saw that also myself on Saturday evening just gone so he well I know he is, he is very fond of Camilo and Camilo very fond of him in fact 
Glenn will joke to me and say, um, he say, you know, he sees Camille like his son. Mm-hmm. I say, well, he is, Camille is his political son. <laughs> and uh, it's a, it's a tremendous loss. A tremendous loss. I mean, I could tell you this. When, when I was consulting about um, possible persons to succeed as Governor General, and I told him the various names as I canvassed, and as soon as I told him all the names, he said, Suzanne. Uh, I said, why well, you said it right away? He began to list for me the attributes. I said, well, I'm taking that as your first opinion. I want you to reflect further. Because this is a very serious responsibility I have to advise Her Majesty, the Queen. And I went back to see him. And on more than one occasion, on his sick bed, I spoke to him. Even before he was sick, to the extent of being confined to the bed, when he'd come out of the bedroom and sit on his easy chair in the living room out at um, spring. He said, I haven't changed my mind. He said, in fact, I've given it even more thought and I'm firmer now than ever. Um, so I, 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 I say that to show you the extent to which I rely on him mm-hmm. and his his judgment. And of course, after he was no longer around me day by day, it, in, um, <coughs> day by day in, uh, at the office after 2015, and he demitted as consultant. And he wanted to demit earlier, I insisted on him staying on. And he will visit me from time to time to render advice on this or that question, or, and I will call on him to, to render advice. So up to when he is very ill, he was providing me with important advice, mm-hmm. that wisdom, that judgment. And, of course, Towards the end, still he was chairman of Petro Caribbean and and as comfortable as always. Petro Caribbean, he was on the board of IADC when the construction of the international airport. Now he is, his his role there was pivotal. Mm -hmm. And he and Sims Martin and and Rudy Matthias worked very closely. You know, there's the kind of yes, powerhouses we have in, in driving this airport project. I, I, you, you, my Julian, who is a tough man, earlier today I spoke to him. He told me he couldn't go on today to talk. He said, is, if he goes on today, he hit me all over the place because he's so wrapped with grief. And this is what, this is what will happen with a lot of comrades. Yes. But he's gone. And we have to, as I say, do a celebration and our love. Show love and to protect his legacy and his memory. Not with words, mm-hmm. you know, but the deeds, I mean, he, and now with the, the trajectory of his ideas and the policies, oh, he had a tremendous love for people. Yes, absolutely. And not love for people in the general, you know. It's easy to say love people in the general, the specific. 
I remember in nine in 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 two thousand and in nineteen ninety eight. I think it was or uh, 2001, whichever one, and Alfred Bino ran against him. Bino was a good man. <laughs> Played cricket for St. Vincent, was in sports, decent man. We ran against St. Vincent. And the man from Stubbs, the two of village area. And Bino would see me on the road, he'd say, you know, Ralph, I think in 94, I can't remember which year anyhow. I have to look up the records, but I remember Bino telling me, he said, I don't see Vincent. <laughs> I said, Bino, when you're beaten in the, this election, you will tell me afterwards when you realize how, when Vincent does his house to house. You do it all in the morning, and you do it late in the evening. <laughs> he'll come, he'll come by you when you're brushing your teeth and making your tea. <laughs> and he'll come by you <laughs> in the evening. Mm -hmm. And when by now, by now is up and down in the middle of the day, hot and sweaty, not seen Vincent. <laughs> but by now is going up and down. Hot and sweaty, yes, but not having the impact that we have not meeting the people. He said, as time went by, you go by, pass by people, by not told me. He said, people would say, you know, a little Vincent came by me here, you know, and Vincent came by me here. This, and he was wondering, and Vincent goes there. Yeah. He said, he remembered what I told him. <laughs> I said, he will go when you least expect him to be going. And he will cover territory which you are amazed. And I, I told him that. I said, remember, you know, I ran against him and I ran with him. <laughs> so I know, I know the man well. He retailed politics. Yes. So then it was yes. superb. Absolutely. And he was an outstanding parliamentarian. The outstanding. He, and if you notice, when he spoke, he one, he will, he passed a number of things on to me as to how to speak without straining your voice. <laughs> and to eat eat your ginger to strengthen the vocal cords. Oh, really? I never heard that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there, you know, and I will tell you this. In 2010, 2015, 2015, I passed on a number of tips to some younger fellows in the campaign. And I was told afterwards, they said, they, they, they said, what they, the old man mean and me now? I mean, we young and strong, what are you talking about? Unless you're talking about yourself. Well, of course, within two weeks, I had to do five meetings because <laughs> fellows are supposed to be young and strong because they didn't take the advice as to how to control their voices and how to deliver. Men are just croaking. How was politics changed? How was politics How was politics changed? How was politics changed? Campaigning changed from the time when you and Vincent and uh, at one point John P and whoever went head to head in, in a three-way race up in, up in North Central to today. Um, you know, because you know, you, you I, I get the sense that we move from the peak on the genuine peak on politics to some really low down, dirty gutter politics. How, in your estimation, oh, has yes. politics oh, changed? Yes. Um, from that time oh, when you, yes. you and him it, were it, camping, it has changed, it has changed, and I think bitterness on the part of people 
and social media um, and internet crazy is driving some people and people don't have the strength to stand up to crazies mm. but the crazies don't have anywhere near as much influence as they think they have <laughs> I could tell you that you know they might they have to and they and, and that's what happens and that's why that's where a number of weaker people following these crazies who at best are uh, who at most I shouldn't say best who at most are either irritations or annoyances but basically side shows mm -hmm. I just have to know what the main events are <laughs> metaphorically that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. and focus and uh, the if you it is, is, is also respect for your opponents you can throw peak on you can be combative but you stay within certain boundaries mm -hmm. but nowadays you know leaders you know you the leader of the opposition now is, is 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 so weak that he has to get desperate and and, and make utterances which um, the crazies would make not mm -hmm. and exposing himself mm -hmm. to possible lawsuits. I mean, if you if you if you have to take people like Vincent Beach, myself, you know, Sir James, um, you don't find that. Any nobody ever sued us. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. Because you you you, you do your pick on. You may use language to generate humor. Right. But you you you, you stay in a crease, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um. And. Uh, no, you 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 have the bitterness which comes in, but part of it too, the bitterness is, is the length of time people also are in opposition, because people don't have any, they, 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 they don't have a sense of what you need to do in the wilderness. Yes, build yourself, but some of them want shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And they feel as soon as they run in, they must win in five years, and they don't win. And they do such terrible things in five years that it haunts them in subsequent years. It brings us a master of timing, political timing. You know? And we all have learned a lot from him in all of these practical things. I. I tell you, Sion, I will miss him plenty, 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 plenty. He's, he's an extraordinary man, extraordinary figure, political operator, thoughtful, and could bring some judgment on behalf of the government and people of St. Vincent for the candidates on my behalf, my family, on behalf of the party I have the honor to lead, I extend sincere condolences to Lady Vida, to the children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, and the friends. You know, there are some humorous things. When Vincent, when Vincent was knighted, you know, you were sending his name to, her, to his majesty, to her majesty. Mm -hmm. And I have a deadline to send Vincent, Vincent has to sign the document to say yes he's accepted after we had gone through the earlier process and 
Vince was the lead alien, they know how to do it. You know? I I had to I had to say, man, what happened? You want you want me to sign this thing on your behalf? <laughs> <laughs> you want me? You want me to sign this? You sign it again? He laughed. Came at the last minute, and then I told him, I said, Vincent, you know about this. So Frederick knows. I know, and my executive secretary knows. Nobody outside of these persons know so it's and there's an embargo which will place on it until such and such a time. That is when it's announced by the palace. So the embargo was on a Friday evening a couple months later. So I'm at home Lady Vida calls me about half an hour after the, the embargo is lifted. She said, Ralph, a lot of people calling me, calling me and telling me I'm Lady Vida that Vince has been knighted. Um, the people pulling my leg, what is happening, Ralph, tell me. I said, it is true. He said, but you know, Vince didn't tell me anything. <laughs> so I start to chuckle. <laughs> See why? I say, I told him that this thing is in this circle, but I expect him to tell Lady Vida. <laughs> and embargo is an embargo. He took it. <laughs> he took it literally. Yes. And while he he was by um, Dunbar, you know, by Mount Pleasant yes, there, yes, yes. eating barbecue. You know, taking his strong walk. You shall try the night line now. Right. So Lady Vida stayed up until after midnight when Vincent turns up. I would normally go to bed early. By nine o'clock, Lady Vida is in bed. So she waited up for him. So she said to him, as she recounted to me afterwards, she said, Vincent, you mean you're here in this house, you're with me. Your name went up to the queen, you know that you do her. Ralph tell me this and so on. He said, but you ain't tell me anything, Vincent. And he said to her, well, the prime minister told me, it is him, the governor general, he wins himself, my executive secretary. He told her, he said, but you're none of those. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> he says, I followed what the Prime Minister said. Mm. He said, she said, he then told her, he said, what, is, what would have been the difference? You could neither help or hinder it. <laughs> so he said, you did not need to know. You need to know now, and you know now. Mm. <laughs> and she just shook her head because that was it. <laughs> I, I, I still I, I still to this day um, picture him coming on stage to match them down Carlos. I, I I think that is the memory of him I have. That's the one I want to keep. Uh, you know, um, this this yeah. tall imposing figure doing some um some serious stamping on the stage there. Eh? That, that 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 to me is the memory of, of Sabins I would love to keep. But I will tell you this. As he got as he got um you know, as the disease took its toll. I mean, I had to comment the last couple of times with Lady Pida there. I see comedy looking better looking, you know. <laughs> um, because he had fine features. Mm. You know, uh, he's a beautiful human being. Yes, indeed. Yes. In and out. And so, as as you speak to the the without letting the cat out of the bag, you speak to the protection of his legacy. Can we expect uh, that something would be named in his honor, uh, or, or something you know something of a national significance like that? Without without letting too oh, much of the bag. I am I am I am absolutely sure. But you know, one of the things you know. So 
to win the song. He doesn't, you know, he's a man who is unfussy. Yes. yes. He's not fussy about a lot of things. And so, he would want, he would want a minimum of ceremony. Right. And of course, that is, that is, that's one side, but the other equation is a public figure, and people love him, yes. and people have to express how they feel. And but what what I do know, those who to the end were. Those, those to the end who are still saying nasty things about him and bitter towards him. I know he would not want sanctimony from them now that he is no longer with us mm -hmm. on this side of eternity. And he didn't, he had no time for hypocrisy, self-righteousness, and sanctimony. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, I am very glad, Sian, that you you have me talking in this manner, rather than a more formalistic way. And well, Professor, based on based I on hope. your based on your your expressions last Wednesday at the um at the and I think that was the very first time it was sung come to me how, how close you you felt to Sir Vincent and I, I heard the, the the emotion in your voice as you addressed the attendees at, at that at that cocktail that you were hosting for the Garifuna brothers and sisters who had travelled. And and so I know yes. that you 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 would have wanted to speak from the heart, as it were, as it relates to Sir Vincent, because yes. this, is, this goes beyond mere formalities. This this is someone who you yes. as uh, iron sharpens iron, and so for many many years you and you and Sir Vincent faced off each other, and eventually um, was able to form a bond that transcended, um, you know, uh, that rose to national significance. And I think it is important that you you speak to Vincent and not just about the, the, the formalities of, of the minister or the consultant, but also about the, the individual who you had seen as, as a close confidant and, and advisor um, over the years. He, you know, <laughs> the little things, you know, a few, a few years ago, while Vincent is a minister, you know, the, the problems in getting molasses from Diana. So you remember that the strong rum ran out. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't get the molasses. You couldn't make the strong rum. And I used to joke and say, well, even some of the vagrants around town have become philosophers because they haven't been drinking. <laughs> and they're now discussing, yeah. they're now discussing ideas. <laughs> you meet them there. But when they, in that period of, and, and the idea of these guys, people drinking white oak and Bacardi, God forbid, they, Remember Dougie Slater, you know, who always involved in having the health world and don't understand how people could drink this, this strong drink. He, Vincent would have a bottle. You take a bottle, which he has that like, oh, bottle of strong one. Mm -hmm. And he drives about, whether in stubs, in Connery, in Park Hill. In South Rivers, I mean, I saw him 
where the bottle had reached down to the last limit by Ainsworth and South Rivers people in in like Carlisle Hackstrom mm -hmm. and family different events where Hackstrom did so. Fellas nursing this little just even just to wet the top of this kind of which is scarcity. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, 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 I mean those are those those are those are little things like these, you know, his attendance at weddings and funerals and christenings and and you see how he interacted and how he connected with people. It's 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 absolutely absolutely amazing. I mean one night one night I went, I was up in um, a campaign and just lead of the party when we, we, we were in a particular community campaign. And uh, I didn't have much money on me. And you know, if you don't have a significant among the shillings in your pocket, <laughs> Yeah. And you go into the bar and you buy a drink. You know, I wanted to buy a soft drink. At that time, I used to drink Pepsi. I don't drink it anymore. And so I asked one of the guys, I said, y'all could get me a Pepsi because I don't have any money to go inside of the bar. Vince said, come with me. Vince went in. He told the bar, and he said, I want to have a Pepsi for Ralph. He said, give me a quarter strong rum. Um, give me another Pepsi to chase. And some fellas come in, say, well, you know, they want Guinness, they want beer, they want Maccasin. They don't say, you and I drinking strong rum all the time. Because a public meeting is holding there. You're drinking strong rum here. Or you want, or you want um, Guinness and 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 high room. I, I drink drinking strong rum. He's drinking strong rum. <laughs> and okay. he's he's one of the few fellas I see because, well, I don't drink strong rum, so I can't talk to the fellas like that. But he, a fellow, would say, a fellow said to him, um. Then he could buy me a half pack of Empire. He said, listen to me. I'm buying strong rum. I don't smoke and I'm not encouraging you to smoke. <laughs> so if you want to buy a cigarette, you buy it yourself. Don't look to me for a cigarette. Uh, you, you <laughs> you're, know, almost he, like, <laughs> you're almost like, you're almost like, you're almost buy your own cigarette. Exactly. He gave me the next, he gave <laughs> me the advice, you know. These are moments. And, and, and he will do these things so easily. Yes. Nobody's offended. People laugh. You know. Yes. Yes. People laugh, and because you know you are the Guinness now yeah, because yeah. you know. And yeah. but 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 Guinness had a skill in handling all of these things. Like it is, and you watch him at close quarters. You 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 could get a PhD in practical politics. By observing a master. Yes. This is why I told told the, the, the guys on the other side in the house, the opposition, a few years ago, that one of their problems is that they don't have wilderness years. And they don't have anybody who had really tutored them in uh, in the politics of in the, in the traditional politics now the, 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 remember you know a lot of these youngsters who came on for the NDP they looked towards Eustace but Eustace had been there only for a short period of time Eustace had been a, a regional bureaucrat and a, and a, and a national public servant mm. Eustace only came to politics in 1998 you see what I mean? yes yes and, and of course, so Sir James, uh, um, former Prime Minister Mitchell, always makes the point that so he, he made he made use of the meeting to see they didn't have him around. Yeah. So the fellas, and you, you see the gap, huh? Yes. 
you see, you, you see the limitations from the fellas because they didn't have a master to help shape them. I mean, in, in, look, when we got to Parliament in 1994, when, when Jameson, Mr. Louis, and myself went back and then with the two senators, we had Vincent chaired sessions on parliamentary procedure. If there was a lawyer and I knew the rules and so on, Vincent's experiences brought them to life. Then when we won, the same thing happened in 1998, he led these when we won in 2001, same thing happened. And that is something which continues where you, 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 you teach the youngsters who come in on all sorts of things. And one of the good things is that those who have come in and whom I have had an opportunity to teach, they all know that they have to come, they come to a trade. Despite what their professional training may be, they are lacking in the knowledge, the experience, and they have to listen and learn and get good habits for parliament, their ministerial posts, for the work which they do in their constituencies, vital. Um, um, question, question, uh, Prime Minister, uh, and, and I, I'm going back a bit, but in 1994, there was a unified ticket between the SVLP and the MNU. I remember that vividly because that was my first, yes. that the first time I voted. Um, then when the idea of a merger came, why Vincent? I mean, Arthur Williams was still around, um, you know, other, other, other individuals from Oliver were still around. Why Vincent? You 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 had the, the head of, of the Labour being stuck. Why why Sir Vincent? You had the head of the Labour Party being stuck. You were the head of the MNU. But when the merger because, came, neither of you were the merger leader. Why Vincent? Well, the point is this because Vincent was by far in the Saint Vincent and the Labour Party. The most popular person in the party and the one who had the most wisdom the best judgment we saw it even while we were contesting against each other we would always have exceptional regard for Sir Vince, for, for, for Vince Leach as he was then and uh, you know because he wasn't quote unquote flashy. He's not a man who did bling. So he understood as as the ULT machine crank up, he will do things which he would not have done in the old, old quote unquote old labor because they didn't have that framework like mash them down car lose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and to give him to give his to give his enormous talents. And gifts, mm -hmm. like gifts for their expression. Mm -hmm. and, and when you wanted substance, you listened to him, and he delivered his substance with a sharpness. Because, well, nobody was at his heels sniping, wanting to pull him down. You know, we were all there to lift him up, and that's why he told everybody that's the happiest period of time. That he was in politics after the 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 the, the merger came about, mm -hmm. you know, and um, he, I will tell you too, he had a, a healthy respect for the skills of James Mitchell, even though he was sharply critical of James Mitchell. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have had Vincent saying that Mitchell Dotish, Mitchell ain't got no intellect, Mitchell is this, Mitchell is that, or he'll critique him on policy grounds. Absolutely. 
and how he's doing something. But he will not disregard him <laughs> and his skills. Because he will do a realistic appraisal of his opponents. And oh you'd fine tune the skills of doing combing and coding of the lists. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he knew the electoral map like the back of his hand. He knew the areas where there were strengths. You know, you will, Vincent, for instance, will, 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 will tell you how many votes he's getting in which area with near pinpoint accuracy. Mm -hmm. And in the last days of a campaign, you're not going to find him going into one of his weaker areas. He will tell you that if, if he has 40% vote to get out of one of his weaker areas, he has that already locked down. He'd always try to go to one of his stronger areas to make sure that all his people turn out to vote. Mm -hmm. So it was more likely in a stronger area for him to bring an extra 10, 15, 20 votes than in a weaker area mm -hmm. where if he spent a lot of time, he had to only pick up one or two. Right. He, 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 his, his talents in all of these things are just superb. Of course, I'm talking many things here which would educate the opposition now, but there are many, there are many things I would educate them about. And Vince would want me to. <laughs> but I have to say enough so that you, the, the, the listening public will get the impression, will get the, the view. And an honest uh, assessment that a political maestro has gone. Yes. Yes. And we have lost a tolerant figure in our party. And the nation has lost an outstanding leader. I've lost a close friend and comrade, whom I love very much. And uh, we will build upon all of his talents and wisdom and his vision. Yes. yes. You know, the other day I was talking to Henrik Rose about Vincent. And I said to, I said, you know, Vince Beach is one of the most underrated men in contemporary Vincentian politics. And he said to me, he said that when I got to know Vince, when I worked with him closely, he said, I saw the huge talent of this man. As Randy Cruz was telling me that. Which is true. It's true. And I tell you, man, the part of this long conversation I'm having with you, I know the comrades are listening on, on, on the star. For me, it's part of a catharsis, it's part of a cleansing to help me to cope with the pain and suffering.